What do you need? Master Huntsman, is there any work for me here? There's always something that needs doing. You're that Scullet's lad, aren't you? Sir Radzig's lackey. That'd be me. Right. I saw you here shortly after the attack. My word, to get away from Talmberg like that, quite remarkable. It's clear you're not easily scared. So I do have a job for you. I'm listening. We've been having terrible problems with poachers lately. In Sir Divish's forests, we've been finding gutted entrails of deer and rabbit nooses all over the place, but no sign of the bastards who put them there. And you want me to track down the poachers? Indeed. Whatever you learn will be useful to me. Do you suspect anyone? Well, it's hard to say. But seeing how much harm they're causing, I'd say they're no crofters looking for a Sunday roast. Shouldn't you be dealing with the poachers yourself? I should, I should. You're quite right. But when I ask the local folk anything, their mouths close up like clams. They're more scared of me than the devil. Do you think the locals are in on it? Well, I don't know. Maybe. But even if not, they'll never talk to me. They're scared I'll dig some skeleton out of their cupboard. You know, the smaller the village, the bigger the secret. That's why I need an outsider to ask for me. I understand. I'll try to find out something about them. Any advice about where to start? Certainly. Ask around the village. Somebody must have seen or heard something. And it wouldn't hurt to ask in the Inn in the Glade, the one on the road towards Neuhof. I've heard they serve good venison. And no shortage of it. That's clear enough. As soon as I hear anything, I'll let you know. Thanks for your help, lad. Goodbye. Good day to you. Listening, Cooper, I hear you have some game here from time to time. Aye, we have dice games happening most nights. <laughs> You're making stuff fair, now. You know full well why. No, I've no idea what you're talking about. I'm not here to make any trouble for you. Just looking for some job I can make. A for. Another string to my bow, so to speak. Hmm. I think I'm catching you, drift. Splendid. But before I tell you anything, I'll have to put you to the test. You know, I can't send every Tom, Dick, and Harry to my friends. Fair enough. What do you want me to do? At the stud farm near here, there's a stable hand by the name of Yakut. Bastard got lucky at dice, and one of my favorite tanker left. And what's that got to do with me? If you'd stop interrupting, you might find out. Anyway, he's so full of himself, he doesn't want to give it back, not even for money. But he's very fond of archery, and I don't need to add he likes to make bets. I'm with you. If I can win your tanker, I can bring it to you. You'll know that you're not completely useless. That's right. So, get going. I'm thirsty, and I'll always taste it better out of my trusty old tank. Good luck.
God, what happened to you? I'd like to find out about the poachers around here who've been stealing game recently. What about them? Well, I wondered if you've got any idea who might be doing it. Tom of the Baths was mouthing off in the tavern, that's all I know. Good morning. I'd like to find out about the poachers around here who've been stealing game recently. I don't know any. No, I didn't mean it like that. I just wanted... I said I don't know any. If you want to know anything, go see Blacksmith's Betty. She saw them feasting in the woods. Feasting? That's all I know. But don't worry. She'll talk your ear off. Goodbye. I'm here to find out about the poachers, Dan, and I need to ask a few questions. Well, ask away. I don't have all day. I heard you were yelling in the tavern that you were off to hunt some venison. Look here. I don't know who you are, but you should watch your map. Oh, I will. Don't you worry. So what happened then? What? Nothing. It was just the beer talking. I got pissed and started spouting shit. Didn't mean a word of it. Maybe not. That remains to be seen. That'll do me. I hear there's been trouble with poachers recently. I don't have time to talk to strangers. Good day to you. Good luck to you. Jesus Christ. I've got a few questions about these poachers. So ask. I heard you saw something fishy in the forest. That's right, I did. Can you describe what you saw? It was after dark, I remember that. I went up past the castle, along by the clearing, and I saw someone had lit a fire, and there were figures singing and dancing, and I could hear the whistling of a pipe. And I could smell roast meat. It was like a feast of some sort. Only I thought maybe it was some witch's sabbat, so I was afraid to stay too long in case they saw me. Did you recognize anyone there? Someone from the village, maybe? No. Like I said, it was dark. All I could see was shadowy figures moving around. Did you hear any familiar voices? No, no. But I heard girls' laughter. Goblets clinking, a piper playing. It sounded just like any feast. Where is the clearing? A short walk north of the castle. There's a track past the woodcutter's camp that takes you there. Thanks. What do you make of this poaching that's been going on? It's clear as day. Hannikin hair's back. And putting those antlers on Nicholas's house? Well, we all know what that means, don't we? It's the sign of a cuckold, you mark my words. You mean to say his wife's cheating on him? All I'm saying is she might be feeling the urge. It happens in the best of families. Who's this Hannikin Hare, anyway? Hannikin Hare? There was a time he was master huntsman here, and Margaret was set to be his wife. But then he got himself accused of murder and fled before they could hang him. Margaret and his job both ended up going to Nicholas. So what's the story between Hare and Margaret? It was complicated. 
He wanted her, and she wanted him too, I reckon. At least for a while. But then she hitched up with Nicholas, and now she says she never had a thought of wedding Hannikin hair. So what went on between her and the huntsman? Those two? There was no love lost between them from the moment her arrived. And then Margaret got involved. It was a messy business. Do you think Hare really killed that man? Who knows the truth of it now? I did find it all a bit odd. Hare never was much of a hothead. But then again, no one really knew him that well. And Margaret never wanted to speak of it. Wouldn't hear a word about it. That's all I need. Thanks. Good luck, then. <laughs> I'm here to find out about the poacher's gang, and I need to ask a few questions. Well, ask away. I don't have all... Blacksmith Betty saw people feasting in the woods, and she says there was a nice smell of venison. What do you know about it? Nothing. I wasn't there. And I don't suppose you'll tell me who was? No, because I wasn't there. That'll do me. Good luck to you. I'm here... Well, I hear uh, good luck there. God be with you. I'd like to find out about the poachers round here who've been stealing game recently. If you ask me, there's some questions best left unanswered. But go and see Elena if you're determined. That old gossip will tell you all there is to know. I'd like to ask you about Hannikin Hare. I'm sorry. But I really don't want to talk. The thing is, every time I spoke to someone about hair, they always ended up talking about you. But I don't. You aren't to blame for anything, is that it? Well, I am willing to believe you, but you do know more than you're telling, and I need to hear it. Very well. You're right. And what would you like to know about hair? How were things between you and hair about them? There was nothing between us. Hannikin Hare impressed my father with all his talk of noble blood. But I couldn't stand him, and I didn't want to marry him. And then it made no odds after he ran away. So you didn't want him? I only asked because I've heard differently. That's village talk. Of course folk gossip. Mostly they just want to hurt Nicholas. Did Hare really commit the murder? God in heaven, how should I know? Anyway... It doesn't matter now. That remains to be seen. That will be everything. I'd like to ask... I'm... That'll... Take care. God save 
How may I help you, good knight? I was at the Ujit's women's sack. And how did the women were making such a ruckus? The witches, I killed them. Killed them? I didn't have much of a choice. And as God bless. Yeah. 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 Be with you. What can I do for you? I heard there are poachers in the woods round here. If only if it was just poachers. It's that sorcerer hair. He's the one who's been running amok. I said he'd be back, and I said he'd be vengeful, and I was right both times. Tell me something about Hanneken Hair. Ah, that was all years ago. He turned up here one day. No one rightly knew where from. He claimed up at the castle to be a nobleman's son, and so he got the office of Master Huntsman, and Margaret was promised him for his wife. Nobody could have known he was a sorcerer. And how did his sorcery reveal itself? Well, he was able to vanish into thin air in the forest right in front of folk, and I've heard it said he spoke to animals, too. Though I don't know the truth of it. That well, doesn't sound very convincing to me. That's because you've not seen his marksmanship. It was natural, the things he could do with that bow of his. They say he sold his soul for the gift of it. I see. How did it go with Margaret? I'm not one to gossip. 
but she was a flighty lass in her younger years. She could never make up her mind which one she wanted, the hair or Nicholas. So in the end, fate decided for her. What do you mean? What happened with hair? Oh, that was quite something. And then some on top of it. Sir Henry of Lipo was visiting here at the castle, and Hare snapped his guardman's neck with his bare hands. Of course, they found him out. But how do you keep a sorcerer under lock and key? You can't. That's your answer. And that Satan spawn slipped the net. Oh, well. It's quite a wild story. Any idea why he murdered the man? No one knows. And most likely never will. But they say he was fully in the devil's power. There was a full moon, you see. Was he actually seen killing the guardsman? I suppose so. Else they'd hardly know who did it, would they? Hmm. That's probably true. There is one other thing I want to ask. Has anyone actually seen this hammock in here? He seems to exist only as a bogeyman to frighten naughty children. Oh, he exists all right. But he flits around in the forest like a shadow. They won't be catching him any time soon. But Blacksmith's Betty heard some of their goings-on in the woods. Goings-on? What's that supposed to mean? Cavorting and raising hell. Sorcery! Hare meets up with his sorcerer's apprentices, and they feast in the clearing in the woods. In the morning, they turn into ravens and scatter, or so she says. But you'll have to ask Betty for more. Who knows what she saw, or what she was doing there with them. Very well. I'll ask. Who does Hare want revenge on? Master Huntsman Nicholas, of course. When the hare disappeared, Nicholas took his Margaret and the huntsman's posting. So Nicholas came out of it well? That one always knew how to land on his feet. Thanks. I think I know all I need. Goodbye. There. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to what what me. What what me. No. That'll do me. I hear uh, goodbye. I heard you've got a poaching problem in the woods around here. In the woods and out of them. Not long back, the bastards hung a deer's head on the huntsman's house. Oh, that's pretty brazen of them. Certainly is. Word around the village is that someone wants to shame him till he square. Putting a deer's head on the huntsman's house sounds pretty risky. Why would anyone do that? Maybe they want to show that Huntsman Nicholas is no match for them. And they're not wrong. Do you think it was someone local? I really don't know. All sorts of things yet said. Hannah and Hare's back if you listen to some. And others are going on about Tom of the Bass. They swear blind he's got his fingers in it. And what about you? It could be anyone. There's more than one that has it in for Nicholas. And who knows what the neighbors get up to by night. What's so suspicious about this Thomas? Just that he was drunk blabbering about how he was going to bring back venison from the wood. Tell me something about Hannikin Hare. He used to be Master Huntsman here a while back. But then Nicholas got him accused of a murder, and the Hare had to flee. It cost him the Huntsman's rank and Margaret, too. What happened between Hare and Nicholas, anyway? Those two didn't get on from the start. 
And then that business with Margaret really set them at each other's throat. But it all came to a head about 15 years back when Sir Henry of Lyper came to visit. Sir Hanish's father? Just so. There was a banquet at the castle in his honor. And in the morning, they found one of Sir Henry's men-at-arms in the ditch with his neck broken. Well, Nicholas made sure that blame fell on Hannikin Hare. And what happened to Hare? That's just it. No one rightly knows. They put him in the dungeon, but when Sir Henry's men came for him the next morning, he was gone. No one knows what became of him. So how did Nicholas put the blame on Hare? Nicholas always had a viper's tongue, and events made it easy for him. That evening, there'd been a right falling out between Hare and the guardsmen. Blows were struck. Well, Sir Divish didn't want any ill will with Sir Henry, so he tried to settle things as quick as he could, and Hare got the short straw. What was going on with Margaret? Her father promised her to Hannikin, because they seemed a good match. But Nicholas couldn't stomach that, so he did what he did. I want to ask about something else. Tell me something about Hannikin Hare. He used to be Master Huntsman here a while back. But then Nicholas got him accused of a murder, and the Hare had to flee. It cost him the Huntsman's rank and Margaret, too. I want to ask about something else. So why do people think Tom of the Baths is involved? Ah, that's just nonsense. He was bragging in the tavern that he'd put on a venison feast for the village girls. Dear for the dears. Did he? I doubt it. He's all mouth and no trousers. But if you want to know more, ask my husband, the innkeeper. I wasn't here that evening. That'll be all. God be with you. God be with you. What do you think about all the poaching lately? And what should I be thinking? If they ever catch them, Sir Divish will have them skinned alive. But for that to happen, our master huntsman would have to be made of sterner stuff. Folk were talking about Hannikin Hare. Oh, good lord. People do like to prattle on. Don't you go believing a word they say. It's the back of beyond here, and they'll tell any tale to spice things up a bit. Do you think Nicholas isn't doing enough? A master huntsman who lets poachers run wild through his woods? He's useless. He couldn't even stop them hanging a stag's head on his own house. Right. Thank you, Inky. I've heard Tom of the Baths was mouthing off in here. So he did. He and Jack Piper were bragging about how they'd make a feast for the village lasses. That there'd be venison roasted in enough beer to fill a river. And a few days later, they did come and buy a few kegs of beer from me. Did they have anything else to say? Not really. I told him to shut up or someone would hear him and there'd be trouble. And what did he say to that? Nothing. He had more booze in him than the castle cellar. He just hiccuped and slid under the table. Piper took him off after that, thank God. Do you suppose he meant it? Hardly. He's nothing but a braggart. All right. I'd best ask him myself. I feel free to ask, but don't believe half what he says. And who is this Jake Piper? Well, he's Tom's best mate. A decent fellow. They call him the Piper because everywhere he goes, he's whistling on that pipe of his. Where can I find him? Well, most likely in the quarry. He lends a hand there to make ends meet. Thank you, Inky. How are the Talmberg folk getting on? Ah, things here. Take care now. My God, what happened to you? I heard you have poacher trouble. Certainly do. They're running wild around here. And they kill a lot more than they take. 
Many a time I've seen a carcass just thrown in a ditch. Why would someone just toss their cats in the woods? It doesn't make sense. The wagging tongues say they're just doing it to spite the huntsman. Do you have any idea who the poachers could be? If I knew, the bastards would be strung up by now. Ah, don't tell me you've heard nothing at all. Well, I did hear that Thomas, that fellow who works at the bathhouse, was mouthing off recently, saying he'd go and bag himself some game and lay on a right feast for the village girls. I see. Has anyone seen those poachers with their own eyes? No, just the dead game they leave behind. But blacksmith Betty saw some goings-on in the woods. Goings-on? What's that supposed to mean? Well, that's what she said, and I ain't one to pry. Why would anyone want to take revenge on the huntsman? He's not the best-liked man in the village. We all know that. And then there are those who say Hannikin Hare is back. Who's Hannikin Hare? You're not from around here, are you? The Hare's quite the Talmberg legend. He used to be Master Huntsman here once, but then he ran off. Why did he run? Well, it just so happens I know the answer to that. Some big important nobleman came to Talmberg around then, and they made a grand occasion of it. And in the midst of it all, Hare had a falling out with some man-at-arms and knocked him in the moat. The poor bugger broke his neck. They picked the hair up, but before they could take him before the court, he vanished. Why take revenge on Master Huntsman Nicholas? Because of Nicholas's wife, Margaret. Hare had his eye on her back then, but she didn't care for him and he was fuming. Well, and after he disappeared, Nicholas got his post. Where did he run to? No one really knows. They say he's hiding in secret tunnels beneath the castle. But that's all fairy tales. It's been years. As I see it, he's underground all right. Six feet down and cold. I want to ask about something else. Thanks. That's all I need to... Take care. Greetings. What do you need? I'd like... I'm sorry, but I... That'll do me. God be with you. Oh. Yeah. My God, what happened to I need to ask you something about the poachers. What? Me? Why me, for Christ's sake? They say you were mouthing off in the tavern. We'd all had a few ales. You know what it's like. The tales get taller. So you didn't go poaching with Thomas? 
My god, no. That would never even cross our minds. Thomas is a bit wild, but I have some sense at least. Some folk had themselves a feast in the woods recently, and the people who passed by told me they heard a piper playing. You weren't by any chance there, were you? I was. I don't deny it. But nothing disreputable went on there. If you're innocent, lying won't help you. I don't know what you want from me. Nothing wrong went on in that clearing, and I certainly don't go poaching in the woods. But you do know something about it, and you're keeping it from me. Covering up for a friend, is that it? Very well. Loyalty is a fine thing, but once they discover who did it, then it'll be too late. You'll be in right in over your head, with him. But I haven't done anything. Then you have nothing to fear if you tell me what happened. All right. Yes. There was venison being eaten, but I didn't bring it. Thomas brought that there. So all that bragging when he was drunk was more than just hot air? I don't know where the deer came from. After what happened in the tavern, Tom took me to the forest, to this hide there. But I was too worried someone would catch us, and I took off. You did yourself a favor. Thomas isn't going to get away with this. So about that feast you had the other day. What about it? So how do you explain that I found bones buried there? What? What kind of bones? Deer bones. As I was saying, there was meat being eaten. So there would be bones left. Then where might you have got a deer from? Game is for the nobles. Well, someone brought it. Who did? I don't know. It wasn't me. I'm asking you for the last time, who dragged in that deer? Thomas. It was Thomas. But I had nothing to do with it. I swear. So all that bragging when he was drunk was more than just hot air? I don't know where the deer came from. After what happened in the tavern. Tom took me to the forest, to this hide there. But I was too worried someone would catch us, and I took off. You did yourself a favour. Thomas isn't going to get away with this. I need to ask you something... What? So who was at the feast? Just the village girls and us. Who's us? Us lads. Was Tom from the baths there too? Yes. Yes, he was there. That'll do for now. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. Good God. I'm here to ask away. Jake Piper reckons you were at that feast. I wasn't. So you're calling Jake a liar? I don't give a toss about Jake or whatever's buzzing around that empty head of his. He probably got so drunk, he had visions of me there. Right, that's it. Either you tell me the whole truth now, or I swear to God I'll knock it out of you. All right. But promise me you won't drag me into anything. Speak up, and who knows? I might put in a word for you. All right. The truth is I did drag a deer carcass there, but I didn't do the shooting. I was given it. That's a likely story. Honestly, not a word of a lie. I caught the poacher just as he was skinning it. And who might that be? I don't know. If you don't tell me who it was, I've no reason to believe that story of yours. Fine. Fine. He's one of the charcoal men. I've seen him taking the charcoal to the forge. His name is Radan. There are plenty of charcoal burners around here. He came from the charcoal piles south of here. If you follow the creek upstream, you can't miss them. Well, you better pray I find him, because if you've been lying to me, I'll go straight to the castle. Understood? I'm telling the truth, I swear. 
I'm sure you'll find them there. We'll see. Take care now. Clear off before I have you thrown out. Yeah. Oh, God almighty, can't you see the one? Yeah. Yeah. That'll do me. Good luck, Van. Hey! Hey! Hey, we good. Yeah! 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 Has something happened to you? A fellow from Townborough claims he saw you poaching. What do you have to say about that? <clears throat> Can you hear me? <clears throat> I could take you off to Townborough right now, so you better speak up. I'm not a poacher. That's not what I've heard. <clears throat> but I'm not a poacher, though. And what about a few groschen? Would that be more persuasive? It could, right enough. That's more like it. Here then, let's hear what you have to say. <sighs> It'll cost you more than that. Oh, all right, for Christ's sake. Here. <sighs> and now, tell me where I can find those poachers. <sighs> Very well. They only take me along from time to time. All right. But you know where I can find them, don't you? Aye. And where is that? The clearing. They meet in a clearing? They camp there. And where is the clearing? A short walk from here. Oh, Lord. A short walk where? Do you know how many clearings there are in these woods? No. Sorry. I don't know. Oh, my God. Where is the clearing they camp in? How do I get there? Along the trail, from the huntsman's lodge. Go into the wood by the big broken tree, eastward. Very well. I hope I can find it. Good 
goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to... I'm sorry. That'll do me. I'd like... Goodbye. I'm glad to see you. I've been hearing some quite wild stories about hair. People do prattle on. It happened a long time ago, and I've heard some crazy tales myself. <laughs> and what's your version of what happened? Hair was a stuck-up knob. He came here with nothing to show but his bare arse. But he thought he could have anything he pointed at. All because he was of noble stock. Whatever became of him? Oh, you must have heard. He killed one of the armed men that served Sir Henry of Lipa, and they sentenced him to hang. Except he scapered right out of the castle dungeon. How did he manage that? Nobody knows. But I'll bet he had help from someone up at the castle. And what was your wife's role in all this? He had his eye on her, and she didn't want him. That's all. And it had nothing to do with what happened later. I heard that he was a sorcerer. And I've heard there's blooming roses on Rattay Gallows at Christmas. A sorcerer. Bah! Hare was a ruffian. But there was nothing supernatural about it. That's all I need. Thanks. I found out where those poachers meet. Well, that's at least one good bit of news. So tell me, where is it? In fact, not all that far from here. In a glade, not far from your lodge. I see. They chose that place to mock me. I might have known. But now we can finally nab them, right? We can. Go to the castle and tell Captain Robard to send some men with you. Wait, you're not coming? I have a lot of work to do. Hmm. Of course you did. Take care. Yeah. 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 Good day. I have some... Sh show me. They... I've come about the poachers. Oh. Oh, so you're the one Nicholas was talking about. All right. 
I'll send some of my men with you. Are you ready to set off? Yes, sir. Good luck, then. Anakin Hare of Zalush, I arrest you in the name of Lord Divish of Talmberg. The Master Huntsman is not coming? The Master Huntsman arrests poachers, not murderers. Will you come quietly? What are you saying, man? <laughs> What are you doing here? Tired of life? Cry now. Yeah! Yeah! I got hair. And where is he? I last saw him lying down in the forest. Are you saying you killed him? There was no other way. I'm just glad I got out in one piece. Ah, well, I'd rather have had him alive, but what's to be done? But I can't be sure it was really hair, unless you have some proof. Uh, he had an heirloom, a signet ring. That would prove it. I have it here. It's his, all right. <laughs> Hard to believe the legendary Hanukkah hair is gone to his maker. Anyway, I do know how to show my gratitude. Here's your reward. And stop by any time you need to. You'll always find work here. Thanks.
Good health to you. I hear you want to tank it off Andrew the innkeeper. I did. Luck was on my side. What's it to you? I always did like that tankard. How do you fancy testing that luck of yours and betting your tankard against my coin? What do you have in mind? I've heard it said you're the best archer in the region, but I'm not so sure. Care to put it to the test? Maybe not the best, but I reckon I could beat you any day. Very well. I'll bet the tankard against your groshin. Deal? Fine, let's do it. Follow me then. Damn, you're better than I expected. All right, all right. Have the tanker. You back your tanker. Ah, so you're not completely useless. Lukesh will be happy to see what handy people I'm sending. I suppose this Lukesh is your poacher friend. Now then, poacher's not a very nice word. I'll call him more a, a man who knows a good opportunity when he sees one. I see. And where can I find this opportunistic friend of yours? He lives on the hill to the north of the castle, in a small hut. If you're planning to talk to him, Make sure you tell him I sent him. I won't forget. Thanks. I'm the one who should thank you. I'm looking forward to putting my lips to the old love of mine. Don't I want you this won't take.
Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, the innkeeper, sent me. Said you had a job for someone who's good with a bow. Did he now? That's all very well, but I don't know if you're a man I can trust. So how can I prove it to you? For a start, you can tell me why a lad like you wants to join us. It's simple. I love to hunt, but I haven't a drop of blue blood in me. So what else can I do? Drew? The damn law won't let a man do what's natural. Anyway, I have to check you out first. See if you're any good. I'm listening. To begin with, I need to know if you're at home in the woods. And if you're any kind of hunter. Bring me some deer antlers and then we'll talk. Easy. I was beginning to worry you'd got lost in the forest. No need to worry. I would have come back sooner, but it seemed a long way to go for just the one. Well, well, so you're keen on hunting. 
I like that, lad. So give me the trophy, and the first task of your trial is done. The first task? Well, there was only one to begin with. But then I thought you could do something else for us. I see. So what do you want me to do next? Kill a dragon? Catch a water sprite? Hilarious. Better listen up, lad. Nicholas the Huntsman has a very fine old hunting horn. But we'd like Nicholas better without any horns. Understand? Wait. What's all this about? Nothing to worry yourself with now. Get the horn, and we'll have a bit of fun. All right. So where is this horn? Sometimes he carries it with him. It is a badge of office, after all. But I don't suppose he sleeps with it. Best to go at night and have a look around his lodge. It's on the hill above the village, opposite the castle. Come back to me as soon as you've got the horn. I can't wait to see the look on Nicholas's face. Right, I'll get to it. Glad to hear it. Good luck. God be with you. I've been hearing some quite wild stories about hair. People do prattle on. It happened a long time ago, and I've heard some crazy tales myself. <laughs> and what's your version of what happened? Hare was a stuck-up knob. He came here with nothing to show but his bare arse. But he thought he could have anything he pointed at. All because he was of noble stock. Whatever became of him? Well, you must have heard. He killed one of the armed men that served Sir Henry of Lipa, and they sentenced him to hang. Except he scapered right out of the castle dungeon. How did he manage that? Nobody knows. But I'll bet he had help from someone up at the castle. And what was your wife's role in all this? He had his eye on her, and she didn't want him. That's all. And it had nothing to do with what happened later. I heard that he was a sorcerer. And I've heard there's blooming roses on Rattay Gallows at Christmas. A sorcerer. Bah! Hare was a ruffian. But there was nothing supernatural about it. That's all I need. I need your hunting horn. What? Why, for Christ's sake? I'll have the poachers hooked. If I take your horn to them, they'll welcome me like a brother. But that horn's valuable. What if I never see it again? Don't worry. Give it to me, and you'll get it back along with the whole gang in chains. Trust me. All right, if I absolutely have to. But remember, if you run off with my horn, you'd better run far and fat. Here you go. Take good care of it. God be with you. Yeah! Yeah!
Yeah. Yeah. I have that horn. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the smile wiped off Nicholas's face when he finds out. As for you, the old man says you're in. Last time you told me that if I brought the horn, you'd finally tell me what's going on. Let's put it this way. Our old man's had it in for Master Huntsman Nicholas for years. Why does he have it in for him? There's more than one reason. But the heart of it is, Nicholas lied under oath and almost got him hanged. That's a fair enough reason. You're telling me. What's he trying to achieve? Do you want to know? Ask around the village what they think of the Master Huntsman. The old man is making a bigger and bigger fool of him day by day. Soon enough, the gossip will reach the ears of Sir Divish himself. And that's just what the old man wants. It wouldn't by any chance be that Hannikin hair everyone's talking about, would it? Hear ye, hear ye. The lad is smarter than he looks. It is him, as it happens. What have you been hearing about him? I've heard all sorts of things. Some people said he's a sorcerer who can talk to animals. <laughs> I'll have to tell Hannigan that one. It's no surprise, though. To this day, folk can't get their heads around that escape of his. And how did he make his escape? What do I know? He's never told anyone. Anyway, if you want to know the details, ask him yourself. So, what comes next? We're just getting something big ready. We'll make camp in the north of Broder Woods. There's a concealed glade, and that's where you'll find us. All right, I'll meet you there. Yeah. So you're the new fellow. Lucas said you know a thing or two. Question is, can we trust you? Would I be here if you didn't? Probably not. Did Lucas tell you who's in charge? I'll speak of the devil. Started to worry you weren't coming. It couldn't be helped, Goathead. I had to get a document written up, and the nearest priest I can trust is in Yanowitz. <laughs> Not writing your will already, sir. <laughs> Who is this? Henry. Lukes brought him. He nicked Nicholas's hunting horn for us. <laughs> then I'm sure we'll get on like a house on fire. Is everyone here? Everyone. Except that full radar and the charcoal burner. No one's seen hide nor hair of him. We can't delay. If he's not back by evening, we go without him. So, Henry, 
Tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? Why you came here. Where you come from. You know how it goes. I want to know your story. What if I don't have one? Everyone has a story. These ways, everyone in this clearing does. Sir! Sir! The Tomboaters are coming! Hanukkah Nher, Zalush. I arrest you in the name of Lord Divish of Talmberg. The Master Huntsman is not coming? The Master Huntsman arrests poachers, not murderers. Will you come quietly? What do you say, man? I say there's nothing to fear. What are you doing here? Tired of lies, are you? Hell, God! You're going to cry. You call that out, that? must have betrayed us. Quickly, we'll hide in the mine shaft. Well, look here. Hey!
It seems things have started to move faster than I expected. Thank you, Henry. Without you, I probably wouldn't have saved my skin. You're welcome. I know how it feels to be up to your neck in shit with no one to pull you out. I'm sorry you've been dragged into my mess. It shouldn't be your problem. What's this all about? It's complicated. And I understand that it might be hard to believe, but today you fought on the side of justice. Who are you, anyway? Let me introduce myself. My name is Hanneken Hare of Zalush. The nobleman? Um, I used to be. My house became sadly impoverished. And I became the master huntsman at Talmberg. Gamekeeper turned poacher? Hmm, I see. That's quite a transformation. Nicholas gave me no choice. What happened to your family? My father lost his influential friends and the money with them. After his death, I inherited only his debts. There was nothing for it but to sell off all our possessions, see to my sister's welfare, and manage as best I could. That sounds a rough deal. Believe it or not, I never cared for the life of a nobleman. I spent my youth running free, hunting in the woods. What happened between you and Nicholas? I was falsely accused of murder. Henry of Lipa visited Talmberg, and the morning after the banquet in his honor, one of his men was found dead. And didn't they have any cause to suspect you? That's just it. They did. At the banquet, I got into a fight with the man. I know Sir Hanish of Lipo. Was Sir Henry his father? Indeed. He was on his way to Ratai to take charge of the fiefdom for young Sir Hans Capon. Why did you get into a fight with him? The fall of the House of Zalush was the work of the Lords of Lipa, and that fellow took great delight in reminding me of it. And then what? Nicholas began to pull strings. Several people came forward as witnesses to say they saw me with the fellow later that night. Why would he have done that? He wanted rid of me. We were both in love with the same lass, you see, and Margaret is his wife today. But back then, there was no question which of the two of us would win her. I was the huntsman of noble blood. And Nicholas was... just plain Nick. Her father's preference was clear. Do you know who did kill the man? No. He was found in a ditch with his neck broken. He could have tripped and fallen all on his own. And that never occurred to anyone? It did. But some people swore they'd seen us jostling on the drawbridge. Of course, that was Nicholas's work. What did Margaret think of you? She took me for a fool. She only had eyes for Nicholas, but I didn't see it then. In the end, she could have saved me. How? She could have told the truth. After the banquet, I was with her. But when they asked her... She said she hadn't seen me that night. How did you get out of it? What leads you to imagine I did? Your head's still on your shoulders, so you must have escaped somehow. I'm alive. But my name and my family's name has been dragged through the mud. For me, that's worse than the sentence waiting for me. If you say so. But you still managed to get away. Well... It's true, I had the good fortune to escape from the dungeon. An interesting story. I can't complain of boredom. The question is, will anyone believe me? And how did it happen? It's a long story. I've got time to listen. All right. But for you to understand, I have to start from the beginning. I was born as Hanak and Hare of Zalush, the eldest son of Sidney of Zalush. My house became sadly impoverished, and I became the master huntsman at Talmberg. Gamekeeper turned poacher? Hmm, I see. That's quite a transformation. Nicholas gave me no choice. What happened between you and Nicholas? I was falsely accused of murder. Henry of Lipa visited Talmberg. 
And the morning after the banquet in his honor, one of his men was found dead. And didn't they have any cause to suspect you? That's just it. They did. At the banquet, I got into a fight with the man. And then what? Nicholas began to pull strings. Several people came forward as witnesses to say they saw me with the fellow later that night. Why would he have done that? He wanted rid of me. We were both in love with the same lass, you see. And Margaret is his wife today. But back then, there was no question which of the two of us would win her. I was the huntsman of noble blood. And Nicholas was... just plain Nick. Her father's preference was clear. How did you get out of it? What leads you to imagine I did? Your head's still on your shoulders, so you must have escaped somehow. I'm alive. But my name and my family's name has been dragged through the mud. For me, that's worse than the sentence waiting for me. If you say so. But you still managed to get away. Well, it's true I had the good fortune to escape from the dungeon. This is one of the most insane stories I've heard lately. That doesn't surprise me. But something tells me you're speaking the truth, Anakin Hare. Thank you. I didn't expect to find anyone who believed me. Trust me, after what I've seen lately, not much could surprise me. So, what are you up to? Working out how to get Nicholas's confession. And how would you do that, exactly? Simple. I'll have him sign it. I've had the priest in Janowitz write me up a parchment. When Nicholas signs it, he'll admit to everything written down there. How do you want to force him to do that? He won't have a choice, or rather he will have, between his wife Margaret and the job of huntsman. I'm not following this at all. It's plain enough. We'll kidnap Margaret. That's to say you'll kidnap Margaret while I distract Nicholas. If he wants to see her again, he won't have any choice. <laughs> I like that. No beating around the bush. My thoughts exactly. But that confession is just a scrap of parchment with writing on it. What will happen to him after that? That scrap of parchment is for Sir Divish and the provincial court. But we'll be generous to Nicholas and let him leave in peace before we deliver the confession to Talmberg. So Nicholas will go free and you'll clear your name? Hopefully. So what do I need to do? That horn you picked up from Nicholas should help us. I'm sure Nicholas will recognize its sound from quite far off. I'll lure him out of the lodge at dawn. And I meant to kidnap his wife while he's gone. Of course it would be best if she went with you voluntarily, but if not, you'll just have to drag her with you. Uh, I don't know. What if there's trouble? That's why I'm sending you. I trust you. But whatever happens, Margaret mustn't be hurt. When you get her, bring her here. Then we can decide what's next. All right. Don't forget, tomorrow at dawn. What do you need?
If you're up to no good, you better think twice. God! Well then...
Good work, Henry. Now we have to act fast and sort out Nicholas. Are you all right? I have to say, that bitch could do with a taste of the whip. Watch your mouth! She may not be my betrothed anymore, but that doesn't mean I'll stand here and let you insult her. All right, I was just saying. Well, don't. Well, I can't say I feel too good about it, but what else can we do? Believe me, it gives me no pleasure either, but there's no other way. Take this confession. Go to Nicholas and make him sign it before you tell him where Margaret is. What if he refuses? You'll have to make him, one way or another. I'm not complaining, but couldn't you go to him yourself? Believe me, I'd rather not drag you into it at all. But if Nicholas sees me, he'll go straight for my throat before I get a word in. The only way to avoid bloodshed is if you go. I see. Yes, you're probably right. And what if he attacks me? Then of course you'll have to defend yourself. If you knock some sense into him in a duel, all well and good, but don't forget we need him alive. So keep a cool head. All right. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. I'll get to it. Here's the document. Don't forget to tell him he should get the hell out of Talmberg before we take it to the castle. Where would I find you? I'll wait for you in the clearing. Be quick. I don't want to keep poor Margaret here any longer than necessary. I understand. Have you seen my wife, Margaret? I'm sure something must have happened to her. I can't find her anywhere. Yes, I've seen her. Well, speak, where is she? Hannikin Hare is holding her captive. How do you know that? It makes no odds. Just listen to me. What, you horsin? Tell me where she is right now or you'll rue the day. Bluster all you want, but if you ever want to see Margaret again, you better get a grip on yourself. Where is she? Tell me! Yeah, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Sign this parchment here, and I'll tell you what you want to know. I, Nicholas Angel, do hereby confess... Conspiracy against Sir Hanneken Hare? Just in proper punishment? What? You must be out of your fucking mind! Never! Sign it if you cherish Margaret's life. I can't vouch for what Hare might do. Hare's bluffing. He'd never harm Margaret. I wouldn't be so sure. If you take a man's sweetheart, his home and his job, and leave him in the shadow of the gallows, you can't expect much mercy from him. So, I have your word of honor we'll be allowed to leave. I swear it. Neither Hare nor I will stand in your way. There. Now tell me where my wife is. There's an old mine gallery, a little to the south of here. Margaret is in there, alive and well. I certainly hope so. Yeah! Yeah! So, 
Have you got it? It's done. He signed it. Voluntarily? Yes. More or less. Well, I'm glad it's been done without bloodshed. And what now? Will you take the confession to Talmberg? We'll go together. I need you to bear witness. I've been gone for years, and I'm not sure they'll take my word for anything. Well, I hope they do believe you. Otherwise, we're both for the noose. Don't worry. Divish won't forget our former friendship so easily. Are you ready to go? Anakin Hare, I never expected to see you again. It was the will of God that I returned. You realize that Sir Henry of Lipa has never repealed his sentence against you. I'm duty bound to arrest you and turn you over to the provincial court. Perhaps. But will you read this first? Henry here is my witness that your master huntsman Nicholas signed it himself. This ought to change their minds. Hmm. It might. I'm sorry, Hannigan. I always trusted you. But your guilt seemed irrefutable. Nicholas was very thorough. Oh, there's no doubting his own confession. Captain. Yes, sir. Have the Master Huntsman arrested. That won't be necessary. I don't think they'll find him. I understand. So, what's to be done with you now? Poaching? and kidnapping the Master Huntsman's wife. You see my difficulty. I know. I can't stay here. It's enough to know my name is cleared. I'll have a letter drawn up to recommend you to the service of Sir Vincent at Village Castle. Thank you, sir. But if Nicholas has vanished and we're sending you to Vellish, then who's going to be my Master Hunter here? There's one obvious candidate. Henry here. Help me bring Nicholas to justice. And he's no disgrace as a hunter. Really? Well, what of it, young man? It will be an honor, sir. Good. Good. Then I hereby name you Master Huntsman at Talmberg Castle. My Chamberlain will tell you more about your new responsibilities.
Good luck to you, Hannigan. Thank you, Henry. I could never have managed it without you. God willing, we'll meet again one day. That's not what we agreed. When you've got a moment, go and see him, and tell him to come here without delay. I want to have a word with him. I'll do that, sir. I'll knock the dust out of his apron, the scoundrel. God almighty. God save, Master Chamberlain. Here I am. Hmm. So I see. And what do you want from me? I'm the new Master Huntsman. I was told to report to you. Aha, uh -huh. yes, yes. That whole business with Nicholas was, how shall I put it, rather unfortunate. Well, I won't keep you with the lamentations of an old man. Now, to your new duties. You're to supply the castle kitchen with game and protect the woods from poachers. Although, there shouldn't be too many of those now. No, I expect not. And when shall I start? Right away. Sir Divish is planning to hold a banquet soon, and he wants venison for it. All right. I'll get going right... Ah, by the way, the Master Huntsman should get a hunting bow and appropriate livery. You'll find everything in the lodge, which is also yours for as long as you hold the office. I see. Yes, yes. Nothing but good news. Run along now. Take care. 